actual, a personal and a moral commitment to one another. And I think that any government, society that chooses to legislate for equal marriage across the spectrum of you know, LGBT and straight couples is a good thing. It brings that institution um, to us. We've been excluded from it and I welcome this discussion. Okay, Andrew Pierce, uh, Equalities Network, I'm just reading these, Amnesty, Unison, Humanist Society, faith groups including the United Reformed Church, the Quakers, Buddhists and the Pagan Federation all support the move. Why are they wrong to support gay marriage? Well, I'm sure supporters of gay marriage would be thrilled to have the Pagan Federation on their side. That would be very important in their campaign. Look, the fact is we've got gay marriage and it's called civil partnerships and they've been a fantastic... Uh, success. Uh, Elton John was the first person to do it with his partner David Furnish. There's, in my view, no difference between a civil partnership and a marriage. And I've been to many civil partnerships. And as a gay man, uh, if I were, if anybody was daft enough to ask me, um, I wouldn't want a gay marriage. I'd be more than happy to have a civil partnership because it bestows the same rights. And whatever supporters of gay marriage say or not, the logical conclusion of this will be that inevitably they will force a confrontation with the church and they will try to force the church to accept gay marriages on religious premises. They will say they won't, but I simply don't believe them because the logical conclusion of the campaign for equal marriage is that gay couples can have marriages in exactly the same way as straight couples. That means they can do it in churches. And I don't think it's for a bunch of here today, gone tomorrow politicians to tell the churches who they can and can't marry, even if as a gay man and a Catholic, I disagree with the Roman Catholic Church's teaching on homosexuality. Uh, Joseph Musgrave, I mean, the, Andrew makes a good point there, you know, same-sex marriage as opposed to um, a civil ceremony. What is the difference? <laughs> I'm afraid Andrew doesn't make a good point. It's a misnomer what he's just said. A civil partnership is a transactional relationship. You don't need both partners there to have it signed. All you need is one person to sign a document. A marriage, you're taking a vow and, you know, as we've said, the political debate is about inquiries under oath, and this is so important. So then to say that all of a sudden it's not important to take an oath as you do in marriage is, I think, kind of facetious. Going forward, what Andrew says about the logical conclusion of this is to make religious people and religious organizations have to marry is, again, plainly false. I mean, Article 9 of the European Convention on Human Rights enshrines religious freedom within the framework that the state decides what is a marriage. So in that framework, what you would then have is the, the government saying that we are welcome same-sex marriage, LGBT marriage, equal marriage, but that it's up to individual churches to decide. Article 9 protects those rights under that framework. So Andrew clearly needs to do his homework and read policy exchanges report on this. You, you know, uh, in, the, in the last general election in 2010, not a single political party had gay marriage in their manifesto. The Liberal Democrats didn't even have gay marriage in their gay manifesto, which was a four-page document. This started on the floor of the Liberal Democrat conference from a backbench Liberal Democrat MP who thought, wouldn't it be a good idea? It was then decreed, a, ser a series of Liberal Democrats said, we must do this because it's clear distinction between the Conservative co in the coalition, and then a year later Cameron embraces it. There's no political will for this, and I think it's staggering that the day after the IMF makes this terrible, apocalyptic prediction about our economy. We're going to get Parliament cluttered with a big row between the Lords and the Commons about gay marriage, House of Lords reform. People tuning in will think Parliament has taken leave of its senses. And we'll also be in a position, actually, where gay couples will be able to have a civil partnership and have a full marriage, and heterosexual couples, well, they can't have a civil partnership, which means the whole discrimination has swung against the heterosexuals. Is that what gay couples want? Not the ones I know, certainly not. Joseph Musgrave, uh, should the ch I mean, if, if this does go ahead, should the church be expected to host same-sex marriages as a next step? Well, I think it's up to individual churches to decide, Kay. I mean, what do you yeah. think? Well, what do I think? I think that, again, it's up to individual churches. I'm, you know, as someone who has a complicated relationship with my faith, I hope at least the option would be open to my church to accept and to want to conduct them. I'm not going to force it on anyone. But to, again, to address Andrew's point, he just changes the goalposts. It's this refuse Nick philosophy. Oh, I bat away his first argument about religious freedom, and then he just changed it to demonize the Liberal Democrats and then to say it's going to clog up Parliament. He should clearly read the timetable on this. This isn't expected into Parliament until next year. So to say it's going to clog up the timetable now is just, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. You know, he wouldn't answer your question, would he, Kay? And you're very adept at putting these questions. In the end, 
he said he might hope his church would go down that route. I heard, Andrew, I heard, I'm not hang on, hang should. on. I'm I heard it's Jack up to Straw. Them to decide themselves. Hang on. I heard Jack Straw, who was Home Secretary, say in the House of Commons during the civil partnerships debate, this would not lead to gay marriage. It would end at civil partnerships. That was just six, seven, eight years ago. I'm absolutely quite certain that the, the will will be to take on the church as a last bastion of discrimination against gays. I make the point, I don't support the Roman Catholic Church teaching 